name is Izzy and I'm a systems designer and customer service expert here at Blue Bat Watering Systems. We're going to be shooting a video showing some of the most common problems that will occur with blue mats and that people will call in with and that I've experienced myself in setting these up many times and quick ways to troubleshoot them and to see if that's your problem. One of the things about blue mats is that they are analog. It's a very simple mechanism in how they work. So unlike other systems that have electronic sensors or things like that where you're never certain if it's the sensor itself that has failed, the mechanism with blue mats is so simple that there's only a couple of things that could really be causing problems. So we're going to be splitting this video up into sort of two parts, uh, either too wet or too dry. So we're going to start with too wet. Uh, one of the first things in terms of wet or dry is when you're placing your carrot into the soil. Ensuring a nice tight seal within the carrot is probably the most important thing you can do because the water has to be able to move in and out of it for it to function. So if it doesn't have a very tight seal on it, it's hard for the water to move in and out and it can push it towards either being too wet or too dry. A lot of these very fluffy soils that have lots of perlite in them, they're very loose and they don't like to form a nice tight seal. So when you're placing your carrot into the soil, what I like to do is put it in and firm the, the soil around the carrot. One of the next most common problems that we'll see is large chunks of perlite or too much perlite in the soil for the carrot to easily have the water wick back into itself and shut off. You can move your first stripper even closer to the carrot to make sure that it's going to shut everything off quicker. The next most major thing that's going to decide how quickly it will turn on or turn off is the placement of where water is coming out. So if your blue mat's not hooked up to anything, you've got a small pot, that's going to be right here where water is coming out. If you're hooking it up to distribution drippers, like so, it's going to be where is the closest distribution dripper. If this first one is further away, you can take your last one and have your last one be closer as well. You want to make sure that the water is going to be coming out within about three inches or less from the carrot. That way the water isn't coming out all the way over here and as the water comes down it's going to have to wick all the way back over here. And so likely this part of the pot is going to get super duper wet before it manages to get over here. The result is that this is going to end up being really really wet. So the same exact thing goes for blue soak. Uh, when we're setting up blue soak uh, you want to have your carrot next to either the distribution dripper that's included with each kit or a line of blue soak. Very commonly what we'll do is we'll just have the blue soak in there and as long as the carrot is within a couple inches of a piece of blue soak, it's going to be just fine. So some common human errors are the reason for a lot of blue mat systems getting thrown a little bit out of whack. And there's three of those that I'd like to cover as they're by far the most common. Uh, the first one is just having a lot of people messing with the carrots and not keeping in touch with each other about who is doing it. Small changes can make big differences with a blue mat. You really don't have to turn it all that much to change the soil moisture. And so when lots of people are coming in and messing around with it and changing it in different ways and no one's communicating, it's really easy to throw it out of whack. We always recommend you either have one person who's kind of the person in charge of changing the blue mats or if you're going to have multiple people doing it, you keep track of it and you stay open in communication with each other. Another way of doing it that I like to set up, each blue mat has this little flange on it that lets you know where the setting is at at that time. So let's say I turn it here, and right at this point, the soil moisture is exactly where I want it. I'm going to take it with a marker, so that way, if it changes for any reason, I know that it's changed. And that brings me to the second most common one, which is you're messing around, you're defoliating your plants, you're doing something, and you just bump against this with your hand, and you change the setting a little bit. It's pretty hard to do that. It's not like the slightest brush is going to change it, but if it does happen, you can look at that little marker mark you made and be, oh, it needs to go back to there, because that's where it was happy. And you can also buy these little caps that we sell that will go over this and protect it from being moved on accident. Another very common thing that will result in fluctuations of watering is pressure change. Blue mats are tuned to pressure. So if we have a sudden pressure increase after we've already dialed our carrots, 
the water is probably going to make its way past the carrot and continue watering. A really good example of that is, let's say my bucket is right here, so I only have a little bit of gravity pressure, but I decide one day, oh, I actually want to raise it up significantly higher. Well, if you suddenly raise it up and don't adjust your carrots and they're getting more pressure, it's going to change how they water a little bit and that's going to result in them watering more. Um, another really common one is when people will increase the size of the reservoir to a new one that's much taller than the older one. And so maybe it hasn't changed, but when it's completely full, you know, the water level is much higher. It's not the bottom of the bucket that's important. It's where the water is inside of it. So even if the bottom of the reservoir is at the same place, if you switch it for a much larger one, when it's full, the pressure is going to be more and it's going to change it a little bit. So just keep in mind, if you change the height of your reservoir or you change the size of your reservoir and how tall it is, you're going to want to keep an eye on things and you may have to make a couple small adjustments to the system. That also relates to the water level inside the reservoir and how it will fluctuate as it goes from full to empty. Let's say you have a really tall reservoir, like a 55 gallon drum that's four feet tall. Let's just imagine this is like much taller than it is. Well, when it's completely full, you've got four extra feet of height from wherever the bottom is. But if it's empty, you just lost four feet of pressure. If it's only a couple of feet off the ground, you may have just lost 70% of all the pressure in your system. That's a huge change. And the way that I like to approach that is just by calibrating my carrots with the reservoir half full so that it is the average pressure that the system is going to experience at any point. So we're now going to cover a lot of the most common reasons why blue mats will be too dry and will make the soil not wet enough. The very first one is over changing or making too large of a change when you're dialing your blue mat. So if the system is a little bit too wet, people will very often make a very drastic turn, you know, several triangles over, and that will often push the system to be very dry. It's good to remember that blue mats are really sensitive, and even small changes can result in large soil moisture changes. Usually I don't have to make turns larger than half a triangle to a triangle. Maybe occasionally I do, but really pay attention not to go overboard when you're making changes. Another very common thing that will happen with people, particularly in a gravity system, is they're gonna let their reservoir get dry because if you're like me, you're forgetful sometimes. And sometimes you work long hours and you come home and you realize, man, I forgot to refill the reservoir last night. If in the time period that this has been dry, that your soil becomes totally bone dry and just sucks all the water out, you're probably gonna have a problem and wanna reset your carrots. You can really easily check on this by just popping your carrot out, uh, seeing if the water level has changed and if so, resetting it. Now, if your reservoir only goes dry for a couple of hours, it's really not that big of a deal. Even overnight isn't usually that big of a deal. Generally speaking, if it's only dry for a couple hours, I would just keep an eye on it for a few days, and if everything looks like it's continuing to work like normal, I wouldn't worry about it. But if you notice irregularities, like some of the carrots watering way more than they were or not turning on enough, it's very likely that you're going to want to just take your carrot out, quickly reset it, and then just pop it right back in. Another common thing that can happen with blue mats is if they are improperly set up initially. So when a blue mat is set up, you want no air bubbles in this chamber whatsoever. Because what's going to happen is, if you have this big air bubble at the top, as the soil pulls water out of the carrot, it's going to pull on that air bubble instead of pulling on the spring that opens up the tubing. So you end up with the carrot not wanting to open up right away, which usually pushes it towards being on the drier side, but will eventually make it open up way too much and push it towards being on the wetter side. Here you can see this air bubble is in there, and that happened because of one of a couple very common reasons. One is it just wasn't filled up completely. Two, there was an air bubble in here that you didn't notice. So. A really easy way to troubleshoot and check this before putting it in the soil is taking your carrot and just flipping it upside down, like so. Here you can see that there's a bubble in it. You can just open up the carrot again and make sure there's no air bubbles in there and screw the top on while the carrot is underwater. 
So just really making sure to be careful initially and have no air bubbles in there really helps to avoid any problems in the future. A lot of stuff like Blue Mats is like that where just quick little checks that you can do at the beginning of the process will avoid you headaches down the line. Another one of the most common reasons why you'll notice that your pot is drying out and the blue mat isn't watering or it's not watering enough is a clog of some kind, something that's restricting the water flow and the ability of that water to move either out through the 3mm tubing or through the drippers of the blue soak. And there's a couple of reasons why that tends to occur. That's either air bubbles or nutrients or some type of particulate matter. Uh, if your reservoir happens to go dry completely and then you refill it again, well, there's now air in this tubing because the water that you're gonna put in pushes air down and into here. So this tubing is eight millimeter. This is our most common supply tubing, although we can do larger ones as well. And the tubing that runs through the carrot is always this three millimeter tubing. Well, this tubing is much thicker than this tubing. So if an air bubble is traveling through here and then the carrot opens up, it's going to want to try and move through here. And oftentimes it will just sit right there or get trapped somewhere in here and just sit there and water cannot get through. There is a very simple solution for that and that is putting a purge valve at the end of your supply line. Um, we recommend doing this with all blue mat systems, really all irrigation systems in general, but all you'll do is just open up this valve, water will come out, and it will pull any air with it. So you know if the bubble's sitting right here, you open this up, and it's going to pull that air out. And you can pay attention to this because you'll see spurts, uh, you know, you'll hear like bubbles popping. And once this is a completely clean stream of water, then you'll know that there's no longer any air bubbles in your system. If you don't have one of these valves in your system, they're very inexpensive and very easy to install. All you'll have to do is just either place a T in your system and put this here, or if your system's tied off in a knot or something at the end, just snip it and place one of these instead. The other most common type of clogging is from nutrients. If you're running nutrients through your blue mat system, which many people do, I do in a lot of my own systems, it's perfectly fine as long as it's water soluble. You will, if you don't clean your system, eventually see some type of buildup. If it's organic nutrients, it's probably gonna be some type of sludge or biofilm, and if it's salt-based nutrients or synthetics, it's probably gonna be in the form of stuff precipitating out of the water and forming uh, some type of scale. You'll see it very commonly in your pipes at home for the same reason. And it also applies to dirty water. If you're running water out of a well or water that's very unclean or very high in minerals, this can also precipitate out as well. And they'll sometimes form clogs in the system. Generally speaking, if there is a clog, it happens either at the point of the blue soak or at the dripper itself, because this is where water flow is the most constricted. Uh, the tubing running through the carrot itself has nothing kinking it really or getting in the way. There's no point of constriction here. So it, you can put a lot of nutrients through a blue mat without it clogging. It's usually these things that will clog first. And there's a very simple fix to that problem. You can either add a product to your water that will help stop sludge from building up in the first place or clean it out if it's there. If the system is at the point where water doesn't want to come out at all, like once you're at the point of a serious clog, it's much more difficult to undo that than to stay on top of it in the first place and stop it from happening. As they say, prevention is always better. So if that happens and you're putting that stuff through your system and you're still noticing it's not fully unclogging everything, I'd recommend removing your drippers like so, unscrewing this top piece, and then soaking everything in a hydrogen peroxide solution. It really tends to get them very clean very quickly within just a couple of minutes of soaking. I usually leave them in about an hour or so just to be on the safe side. And, you know, in the meantime, you can still have your blue mat system functioning, but just out of the 3 millimeter tubing. And then, you know, you just come back an hour later after these have been fully cleaned and reconnect it. A good way to tell if the dripper is the source of your problem is to actually just unscrew these 
and see if water then wants to come out. Because a lot of the times that clogging happens as the water is passing through here. The third and most uncommon reason why a blue mat clog will occur is just actually having particulate matter in the system. So if the nutrients you have aren't fully water soluble, or if you're just being dirty, you have some dirt sucked to your hands and it gets in the reservoir, a little bit of perlite or something gets in there, if it's small enough that it can get into the tubing and then lodge in there, it can uh, create a blockage and stop the water from getting out. Once again, in that type of a system, uh, you would just have a purge valve that you'd open up and hopefully it would carry that particle out. If it's really truly stuck in there, you may have to replace that section of tubing. Another reason why you will sometimes notice that your system is all of a sudden not watering as much as it was before and letting your soil get too dry is due to a change in pressure, very much like we mentioned earlier. If you decrease the pressure, the water is no longer able to get past because it doesn't have the force to. So if all of a sudden you lower your reservoir from where it was before, or you have just a smaller reservoir or you're once again not paying attention to the fact that the pressure will fluctuate within the reservoir, let's say you have a very tall reservoir and you calibrate it when it's completely full and it gets totally empty, well by the time that it's totally empty you might not have enough pressure for everything to function really well anymore and that will result in the blue mat not watering enough, it will probably still water but at a much slower rate and allow everything to become a lot drier until you raise the pressure back to where it was originally. The moral of this story is try and keep your pressure consistent on a blue mat system and once again calibrate everything when the bucket is about halfway full so that way you know it's the average pressure the system experiences. If you're running a gravity system and you want the pressure to stay constant all of the time, this works for it both increasing or decreasing, you can put a float valve on your system and that will keep your bucket full all the time. And it will always keep that water level at the same point so that the pressure will never change. Being able to quantify whether or not your soil is too wet or too dry is one of the most important parts of diagnosing a blue mat system problem. You know, it's always best to understand what's going on before you try to fix it. So using a tensiometer that will allow you to check on the soil and see if it's, you know, drier than it was before or if it's wetter than it was before will really help in deciding what the problem is and how to go about fixing that problem. Because once you know what the problem is, it's a pretty short list of figuring out what you need to do to fix it. If you give us a call and ask about some problems you're having with your blue mat system and how best to troubleshoot it, these are definitely going to be the questions that we open with in the conversation. One is, did you make sure that your carrot is well seated? That's always the first thing to check or to ask yourself. Uh, two is, are you running drippers, blue soak, or just the three millimeter tubing through the carrot? Because that will help decide what type of clog it might be if it's a clog. Um, are you running nutrients through your system? And if so, are you cleaning those nutrients? And also, is there a lot of aeration material in your system? Is there lots of perlite? Is there lots of volcanic rock or any type of stuff like that? And if there is, is that carrot uh, being placed directly into that or is it being placed into something that is going to be able to form a tight seal around it? Is there a dripper or a point in general that water is going to be released that's near the carrot within three inches. And of course, if you're not able to figure it out, give us a call and we're more than happy to answer any questions you have or troubleshoot any problems that you have. We just want to make this video so that it can save you a little bit of time on the phone with us and you might be able to troubleshoot it by yourself. Because troubleshooting a blue mat is pretty easy.